So I haven't done any recording in a while. Uh, I've been working on a project with uh, with Jamie, and uh, we pretty much wrapped that one up. I think uh, it went from starting out small to working into this grand thing of getting guests, musicians, and drums in there, and a banjo, and all that stuff. But we came full circle, and we're just going with the natural sound. He's just singing and playing guitar. Got a guitar in the background, maybe a little bass or whatever, just to add some low end to it. And um, that's where I was. Um, we found out we had to re-record some stuff because I wanted to have control over the vocals and his uh, guitar playing. So when I'm doing the automation, I may want to increase the, the volume of the guitar to make it more intense. Or I may want it to focus on the just the vocals itself, so tuning the guitar down and bringing the vocals in the foreground. When all that was done, guess what? I was listening to it in the car and it sounds quiet, it sounds tinny. So I'd be listening to the uh, music of something not like a store-bought CD, right? It's nice and loud, it's dynamic and everything else, but why does mine sound different? Well, I had to figure that out. So what I did was I compared the, um, I mixed it all down, compared it right next to something similar like Sarah Sleen, where she's singing and playing the piano. It's the same dynamics of the music, even though it's sort of the same genre, but not really. Um, but it's close enough that I can still get I, the volume levels in her CD. I want to have Jamie have the same in his. So uh, I mixed it down and then I brought it through the program again to uh, use compression and a few things like that just to get as much punch as I could out of the instruments and get as loud as I could without exceeding the uh, thresholds where it was clipping. I didn't want it to clip, that's the most important thing. So I was able to increase the volume quite a bit. So when I listened to it in the car again, I'd listen to the other songs in the playlist, and then I'd listen to Jamie's song, and the volume's right up there where I want it to be, and it's nice and clear. So that's where I am right now, and then I'm working back with my friend Jason now. He's got a new project that he's working on. He's been working on it for a number of years, actually, but um, he put it on hold. He's working on some different things with some other people. So. Uh, what I'm going to be doing now is taking the same things that I learned from Jamie's project and adding in some uh, guitars. I'm going to actually be adding the violin today into some classical track that he's working on. And I guess I'll let you have a look at what I have here anyway. Uh, the idea is that we're going to blend together programmed classical music along with the natural instruments. So I got a violin here. I'm probably going to add a few tracks. I'm also going to program in some uh, cello using uh, Cubase and the uh, thing. I don't know how to explain it, but I'll show you later on. Okay. This is probably one of the most complicated tracks I'm doing because I'm uh, doing some violin work for it. I probably did about six or seven of uh, Jason's other tracks where he wanted uh, just some basic guitar, maybe some bass, but we're not sure because the bass is complicating the sound a little bit. There's already a lot of bass in his tracks already. Uh, he wants basically like a like a lead guitar over top, over top of some of the other stuff that he's doing already, so for me that's pretty easy to do. Uh, basically what I would do, I'll show you just an example because I got Cubase open here. This track right here is one of Jason's tracks, it's already mixed down. And below that, I actually already have uh, a lead guitar <clears throat> that I uh, played along with. And um, this gray part right here is where um, I may have fucked up at the beginning and then tried it again. So Cubase shows me that there's a track underneath there. So uh, later on, if I want to mix the, and blend the two together, I can just drag this, this corner right here and uh, trim it a little bit. Um, what I would do later on with this track is I would add in the automation. Um, you see the, how that, that dropped down a little bit? This line right here shows that the uh, the volume is, is constant all the way across, but um, what I'm going to be doing is I want to program my lead guitar so it's quiet right here, and then right around here maybe it'll come up. I'll bring the volume up quite a bit so it comes into the foreground, and then uh, another part of the song, something else comes in, so I want to bring my guitar back down again. So that's what I would be doing with that, and uh, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing with the uh, with the violin track here too. I'm going to be recording straight across here. 
So what I want to do is, um, I just have this as a mono track right now. These are both mono tracks and this one's stereo because it's got the two bars here. I don't really need to have three different violin tracks going into Cubase. I'm pretty happy with three different microphones all going into one signal going into Cubase. So I won't be able to adjust the sound very much later on, but I'm taking time right now to, uh, to get a good violin sound. I got the uh, condenser mic right here, which is turned up pretty high, but I got a really good clear signal in the foreground with the uh, condenser mic here. And then I have uh, turned down quite a bit lower. I have two different um, <clears throat> lines for the, for the two built-in microphones and the, and the R16. So I'm getting a little bit of the room sound, and I'm also getting a nice clear um, recording and a really good clear sound from the condenser mic. So I'm just going to wing it like that. There we go. Anyways, I showed you the, uh, the recording process for recording the violin. I'm going to do the guitar the same way. Uh, there's your uh, condenser mic there. Uh, <clears throat> this has some pretty nice features on it. Uh, you can plug the, uh, the, the guitar into the Ultra or the, the regular one there. I also got a foot switch so I can switch back and forth. Um, this actually doesn't really have distortion on it. It just has uh, ultra, whatever. Just basically some sort of a tube overdrive or whatever. Uh, there's a regular volume. You can adjust the tone, the depth, and the watts. And uh, low power or high power. Really nice sounding amp, but I'm really glad I got one that actually doesn't have distortion on it because... Uh, after playing with this, I just realized that I didn't really care much for um, digital distortion so much anymore because an amp like this really gives you a much warmer sound, and <clears throat> and <clears throat> I wish I could talk. In the recording process, it really sounds a whole lot better. 